Hello, I'm going to give you a brief walkthrough of some of the new features of SimsuShare version 1.1.15. First, for any kind of news that you're looking for, our SimsuShare webpage at simsuShare.commandsim.com or just simply simsuShare.com has information, help, how to get the app, also links over to our LinkedIn, our community, our Facebook and Twitter page where we have late breaking news. Our LinkedIn page is the Sims you Share Users Network. I want to show you some of the Twitter feeds you may want to follow, either Sims you Share, which is simply Sims you Share, or our Director of Training, Jim Murphy, at Murph289. And of course, I want to point you over to our Facebook page, where we have late breaking news, things that other people have contributed, pretty much just about how to use Sims you Share and anything around Sims you Share. So without further ado, I'm going to go to version 1.1.5. Now some of these changes that you're going to see happen in earlier versions, but uh, good to review them in case you haven't run into them yet. So one of the first things you'll see about the new version is we include several languages. And you'll be asked about language when you start Sims you Share. English, Spanish, French, and Dutch currently working on some more. You can set your language over here. Now, one of the big new features of 1.1.15 is the ability to open multiple windows at the same time. So, in the Mac or Windows version, you can see here that you now say New Window, and it basically creates a second window, or third, or fourth, or fifth, or whatever, and you can resize these. If you use the full screen mode, that will actually make that screen go full screen. Surprise, surprise. So, you can actually go and just close the windows. And I'll show you an example of using the new windows in a moment. So now, what I want to show you as well, if we actually, let's say we've got a simulation, A and side A and side C. Here's our A side. Now, one of the features a while back came in the pause and reset and pause and restart. But now if I pause the sim, you'll notice a little button shows up in the top right here, which I can use to conveniently start the sim again. Another thing people have asked for, which we did, we put the back button right over here, even though in the Windows and Mac version, you can use the left arrow key on your keyboard to actually go back, just the same way. So let's say we're back over here. Now, um, still people have asked, can they get rid of this menu? We just added right over here something that says Hide Menu. So if you press Hide Menu, now the menu stays there, but it just disappears, and that way it can be a little bit more immersive or if you're, if you're recording a video. The menu is still there if you click on it, and even the back button is still over here, but you just have to know that it's there. You notice when it starts up, it actually would disappear. If you want to see those menus again, you just click on the menu here and say Show Menu, and then it will make it right there for you visible. Now, you may want to be starting several windows at the same time, let's say like an Alpha and a Charlie side. So I go here, I can say New Window. It starts up a new window, just right from the beginning. And each of these windows, you can use them to play, you can use them to edit. You can't edit the same simulation at the same time in different windows. So I couldn't edit a House A and House A in different windows, but I could be editing House A and House C at different times. I'm going to go here to play, and I'm going to say now, let's say House C. Now, once it loads a new simulation, it resets everything, so they're synchronized. So these are actually the events in the same simulation. Now, if I want to hide the menu as well, if I hide it, it tells all the windows to hide. And similarly, let me just shrink this down a bit. If I say pause here, there it is. If I say pause, all of them pause, and all of them get this little arrow over here. So if I click pause again, I resume, now it's set like that. Now you may notice here the title of the windows, this says House C and House A. And the reason that, you, what you can do is you can get your different windows, and again, can be two, three, four, eight different windows. You can minimize the one you want, and then use in Windows Alt Tab, in, in the Macintosh and other key sequence, to bring up which window you want to show. And if you notice here, this will now, when I actually bring up the different window, the title House A or House C is over here. So if you have it minimized, you can then quickly bring up House C. And that's a really useful feature as you're, you're switching the window. So for example, if I go here and say, let's say House, House C over here, I'm going to minimize that. 
I can just quickly go back. Okay, you want to look at the Charlie side? Go to house C and go like that. And similarly, if I want to go back to A, house A. Now I can switch like that. Now, one last feature which we introduced a couple versions ago, but people may or may not be familiar, is, is when you're actually editing a scenario. Let's say, like, we're going to go here to the Charlie side. I'm going to edit a scenario. Now, if you notice here, I've got a bunch of different elements. And if I want to select the fire, I can select that. But if I select the smoke, I'm hitting the fire instead. I, now, in the first version of the program, you had to move things around. We wanted an easy way for you to be able to select the background elements. So what we've done here is we've created something called the Selection Rotator. So for, this is for more advanced users. You go to the menu and you say Show Selection Rotator. Now what this does is when you press the bottom button, it rotates through, cycles through all the elements on the screen including the back one. So when you hit the element that you want to select, you press the upper button here, and now we're selecting, we're editing the smoke. And we can move it around, we can do whatever we want, we can change its properties. Another useful feature at the bottom here is to hide other elements. So if I need to see the position of this, I can hide the other elements, the ones I'm not editing, and now I can see that very clearly. But when I'm done, the other elements come back in. So this selection rotator is very useful when you have multiple elements on the screen and you can decide whether or not to show that. That's about it for some of the new features. Now, as I was saying over here, we could be actually editing multiple ones at the same time here. I'm playing at the same time. You want to probably not edit and play in the same window. Um, some of the changes may not be reflected, but I could certainly be editing. If I wanted to edit, you're creating edit right at the same time. I can be editing A and C. And you notice that the title, instead of just saying the name of the simulation, it will have in parentheses editing. Again, anything that we can help you with, please contact us and like us on Facebook. Contact us through Twitter, through LinkedIn, Facebook, or directly on our website. Thank you again, and we look forward to seeing the great things that you're going to produce.